Tell us, why are you here today? Well, we're here because I've been on this journey through the 100 years of the NFL. Mm, 100 years. Yeah. You know, 1920 actually predates our own measures of time. They're right. Namely, the birth of a certain Coach Dicka. See that? That's your IQ, buddy. Zero. <laughs> All the turnovers. Uh, I'd rather talk to him. <laughs> the NFL was actually founded 19 BD, before Dicka. So I guess I know what you guys think is the greatest team ever. Da Bears. Dick Buckus and Gail Sayers became legends here. But if there's one bear who best represents the city of broad shoulders, it's the coach, Iron Mike Dicka, who I caught up with on the Chicago River. Well, I'm a Pittsburgh guy, I came from Pittsburgh, but this is my home, Chicago's my home. Yeah. And the fans really kind of uh, adopted me, but uh, I wanted to be a dentist. You wanted to be a dentist? Dentist. You're kidding me. Dentist. They told me they could get me in dental school. And with my chemistry Dog grades, I couldn't get into a doghouse. <laughs> Lucky for the Bears, Iron Mike did most of his drilling on the field. One of the first great pass-catching tight ends. One record that I think will never be broken will be Gail Sayers' six touchdowns against the 49ers. The incandescent Sayers goes careening into the corner with another touchdown. But you caught a touchdown in that game one-handed. Nobody talks about it. The greatest catch I've ever made in my life, and nobody remembered. Nobody talks and about it. And they shouldn't. Ditka played seven years in Chicago for legendary coach George Hallis. When Papa Bear was looking to reinvent the team in 1982, he knew just who to call. Mike did. It's an opportunity of a lifetime for me. It's something I've looked forward to. Chicago would never be the same. Stay out! Stay out! Give me a half back! Get him the f out of there! We had a lot of guys that thought they could play football, but they couldn't play football. Right. You gotta love it. He was this way as a player. He'd come back and practically punch out his own quarterback. We had to make a lot of changes. We brought in the guys that could play football, and we had a winning team. Started with good tempo now. Be smart. Let's go right down. Here. Let's pin him in and let the right defense here. go to work. In 1984, the Bears set a league record for sacks that still stands with 72. He's going to go down! Another sack! I don't think my dad's forgotten. I also came here to see if you want to maybe send a message back to my dad apologizing for sacking him 11 times when he played for the Vikings. He wasn't yeah. getting rid of it fast enough, no, clearly. No, it didn't matter. Their offensive line couldn't block me. Right. And, and you remember, we had a pretty good defense yeah, thank team. You. It all came together in 85 when the Bears went 15 and 1. The city belonged to Sweetness, Samurai Mike, the Punky QB, and the Fridge. Coach, Refrigerator Perry, when did you know I'm going to let this guy run the ball. I'm going to let this guy score a touchdown. Well, you know, we'd run those 10-yard gassers. You know, we'd run them after practice. And I'm watching this guy start. And for the first five yards, he's the first guy. Is that right? He may be 300 and plus pounds, but he's an athlete. That's something. I've been mean, standing right in front of that table and jumping up with both feet and just keep doing it. And he got a lot of stuff he has to bring up there with him. I said, we'll put him in the backfield. We'll put him in front of water and we'll get water ball and we'll lead him in there. Bang, people flew all over. Water scored. William Perry off 315 pounds to do something. <laughs> so I said, well, if he can do that, we'll hand him the ball. And we did that and he scored. Hand off to Perry, <laughs> crushes the right side. <laughs> the if he can do that, I said, we'll let him go out for a pass and throw the ball. And we did that and he scored. <laughs> McMahon fakes the He's hand open. off to Perry, fires the right side. Oh, oh he got it. You remember, of course, Red Grange, the famous galloping ghost. Now they call the refrigerator the galloping roast. <laughs> and he's captured the imagination of everyone. The refrigerator. <laughs> the Super Bowl was a laugher. Yes, William Perry has scored on a one-yard touchdown run in the Super Bowl. As the Bears captured their first championship since 1963 when Ditka played football at Wrigley. Now, the coach was the king. The Bears, a religion. And no visit to Chicago would be complete 
without meeting the Bears' biggest fans. You don't look too excited there, Peyton number two. Peyton number two, what's, what's yeah, that all about? It's right, kind of culturally appropriating there, coming to Walterstown with that name and that jersey. Uh, appropriating? That seems like a pretty big word for you, Carl. Hey, show a little respect. This is hallowed ground, my Yeah, friend. that's right. This ain't the Indie Dome, yeah. all right? No climate control here, pretty boy. Yeah, you need a sweater or something, no? Uh, Are you chilly, Peyton, number two? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I guess so. Or I could just eat like you two for a couple weeks, and I think I'd be fine. Meow. This cold has hooves. In the 1990s, the Bear superfans became a national phenomenon, a recurring television sketch that celebrated the die-hard blue-collar fan. They were known for their reverence for a certain Coach Ditka. Excuse me? Wrigley Field. It's pronounced Ditka, my friend. <laughs> the occasional heart attack. Hold on, hold on. Back with more in a moment. He just had a heart attack, but it's all right and a catchphrase that's now ingrained in the NFL's 100-year history. A certain team known as... But after Coach Ditka left Chicago in 1993, the Bear superfans were mostly in hibernation. Until now. You guys got enough to eat? Yeah, we're cutting back. You know, we gotta save some room for dinner. Mm. Plus his brother Bill had some heart problems. Kind of makes you think twice about knocking back that six pork chop. Yeah. It's nice eating underneath these majestic and stoic pillars that guard Soldier's Field. The American Acropolis itself. Mm. Truly, these pillars are built to withstand even the most errant field goal attempts by Cody Parkey. <laughs> Peyton Manning takes the snap, sets up, steps up in the pocket, rolls away, throws one downfield, Reggie's there, got it to 20, 15, 10, Now, be honest, if the Bears had given Rex Grossman the day off in that Super Bowl and had Dicka play quarterback, how badly would the Colts have lost? Well, Coach Dicka, you got to remember, was in his late 60s at the time. So I see that as a close one. Bears 96, my little pony's 10. That seems, that seems wrong to me. Horses are no match for the Bears. The Bears! Bears. The dream is reality. The Chicago Bears are world champions of football. The 85 Bears, without a doubt, the greatest team, nay, the finest amalgamation of humans ever assembled. You know, I actually met Walter Payton once at the Pro Bowl. My dad was playing in it, and Walter took me out on this catamaran, and I was gone for like an hour. My parents thought I'd been kidnapped, and Walter walked up with me, and kind of said, hey, Peyton and Peyton and just kind of been hanging out. Wasn't a big deal, but it was a pretty cool moment. That's uh, absolutely fascinating, Peyton number two. Captivating. Yeah, maybe you should have Brad Paisley write a song about it. Yeah, I met okay. Walter Payton. Okay, okay. Look, it's audible here for a minute. Let's talk about quarterbacks. Explain to me why the Bears haven't had so many memorable guys under center. Oh, nonsense. Why, we've had many great quarterbacks. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sid Luckman. Sid Luckman. Uh, I, heard, I heard you said Luckman. I heard that part. McMahon for a year? Yeah. Uh, for a year. Bob Avellini for like a week, I think. I remember that week. Good week. I got it. That's impressive. What? Why are you fighting it, White Peyton? Join us. Come on over to the South Side. <laughs> you mean become one of you guys? Uh, I don't know. Is that desperate? You sold out for worse. That's a good point. Good point. Many times. Baby Peyton, my son, are you ready to be baptized into the Bears? Super Phantom. Well, I'm, I'm not drunk, so no, not really. Peyton the Lesser, do you believe in Hallis, the Papa Bear Almighty, and in Iron Mike Dicka, his only son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and suffered under Mike McCaskey? 
who descended into the hell that is Dallas, but rose again and ascended into heaven, otherwise known as a certain city where the meat stuffed the streets, Chicago IL? Do you believe in fierce before noon, the holy sweetness, and brats everlasting? I do. Well then, Peyton, in the name of the Papa, the Dicka, and the 46 defense, I baptize thee into this Italian beef juice and out as a Bears superfan. suck. Amen. All right, we are back here with Bill Swirsky, super fans. How you doing, Peyton number two? Real good, Bob. No heart attacks to report, but I've got a promising murmur. Nice. Beautiful. First Erlacher grows hair, and now this. This is a magical town. All right, let's make sure that baptism took. Greatest NFL owner ever. Papa Bear. Papa Bear. <laughs> Papa Bear, the man forever known for what? Founding the league, coining the term NFL. Please, the greatest thing he or any plant, animal, or mineral ever did was draft a certain Mike Ditka. Yes. Greatest Bears movie? Brian's song. We would have also accepted Paddington, too. All right, boys, time to see if you're a Trubisky or a Rogers. Chug on the Bears. The Bears. I uh, forgot to mention that uh, man is otherworldly. You might want to take a selfie with the gentleman. Hold that up. Yeah. Yeah. Da 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 